Okay. Whoa, no. Don't want to hear myself. Bad. Okay, cool. Cool beans. We live. Hey guys, how's it going for anybody who's here? Just doing a quick uh, update on my facey bookies. And then I will be ready to go. Sorry I couldn't uh, hang around last week. The internet completely went stupid mode on me. <laughs> Which totally sucks. It was like specifically for that one day too, of course. Hey, Just Jono, how's it going? Boop, boop, boop. Hey, Reggie. Hey, guys. I'm just updating my uh, updating a few uh, a few places right now that I'm live, and then I'll get ready to go. Hey, Vlans, Dark. Hi, guys. Okay, so um, I wanted to ask you guys. Maybe, maybe you guys have some suggestions for what I should do tonight instead of just kind of like randomly going at it. And I can keep that in mind as I'm kind of sketching. Not really like, hey, you know, I want you to make like a worm, but like just like start throwing out like some really like cool kind of like, like I guess like creatures or um, animals or anything like that that you have in mind and I will keep that in mind while I'm sculpting and maybe it'll turn into something like a, like a combination of everything who knows and also also if you guys are new here, I'm gonna do my little spiel. <laughs> if you guys are new, um, I stream here every Wednesday at 8 p.m. EST. And what I do on the Pixelogic channel is I take a sphere, like you're seeing right in front of you, and I push and pull it a whole bunch while answering questions in chat, of course. Um, and I push it and pull it a whole bunch until it kind of like looks like something. I don't really like have any reference or idea of where this is gonna go. I just, it's kind of like a, you know, one of those, I guess, artistic exercises to really push yourself and push yourself out of a boundary that you might be stuck in and just kind of like experiment a lot with shape language, shape design, and silhouette. So that's really what this is about. It's not necessarily about studying anatomy, studying um, specific creatures or anything like that. Uh, but I do emphasize the fact that you need to know anatomy and you need to know um, how to reference well when making an actual project and things like uh, of that nature. But for, for this specific thing, it's just a matter of pushing yourself out of, out of like, you know, a box. So, okay, so it doesn't look like you guys have any suggestions, which is totally cool. But if you do come up with something, just kind of like throw it in the chat. It's all good. All good. Oh man, you know the one place that I didn't update? One second. So I'll give it like one more minute and then I'll start. Oh. I didn't update my very own Discord. Bling. And all right, so guys, if you wanna, if you wanna get, um, if you guys wanna get involved in this and sculpt along with me, feel free. Uh, ZBrush offers a forty-five day free trial, which you can easily get by clicking one of the links down below um, the video. If you just scroll down into the info panel section, you'll be able to see that the cave troll first edition Dungeons and Dragons. Oh man. Now you're really testing my knowledge. <laughs> Cave trolls, man. 
All right. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. It is me. Okay. Let's let's actually just get started now. Um so really what you want to be doing for something like this is kind of just you know, just getting getting some like interesting shapes, not really like completely thinking about what's going on, but like just playing with the idea of having like shapes interacting, inter intersecting and moving with each other and seeing where that kind of goes and what you can kind of like get out of it as well. So I like to just kind of like mash it up a whole bunch. Ooh, I do see something. This might be interesting. And then a low dynamesh will be sufficient for this. Hey Dave! Zomax, ready! Oh man, all you guys. What up? Centipede meets anti Ant Man. Oh my god, okay. So, bugs, trolls. <laughs> we'll see if like, any of that actually ends up in this sculpt, because I've got, I, you know, you guys are saying things. <laughs> I just saw like this really silly face right here and I just really wanted to do something with it. Do you guys see it? That was the the first troll. Hold on. Oh wow, yeah, that's Oh man. That reminds me of like I remember I remember seeing the um uh, the first edition Beholder for Dungeons and Dragons, that, that thing just looks sad. It just looks like sad on another level. See, the cool thing about doing this, like, you know, randomly, like, etch-a-sketching, I guess, your, uh, your model beforehand, like, your, your, the sphere, is you can get, like, these really cool, like, kind of serrations and stuff like that that are happening that kind of give you an idea of, like, where you might want to go with whatever it is that you're sculpting. And, you know, like like anything, it could be a it could be a complete flop or it could be something really great. So we will have to see what this turns out into. Right now it's just completely sillyville. And it might stay that way, so we will see. <laughs> you guys are also saying ants. So I'll probably maybe like do some like busts or something then. So I'll take suggestions, I guess, for the next busts after this one. So doing like full full forms tonight. We'll do some just do a bunch of busts. I feel like that would be fun. Oh no no no! These this is a no no no! This is not part of Thu. I I wasn't sure. I I didn't have time to ask um, the ZBrush guys if I could work on the Thu challenge on stream. So I'm just gonna do some busts tonight. <laughs> Looks like a giant brain. Yeah, exactly. So like any like you know like all all of these streams. If you have any questions about anything. Shoot me up in the chat. Not literally, please. We <laughs> we no, I can't say that. <laughs> 
Looks like a giant brain. Giant brain! I think I might go with that, like, big sacky feel to its back, the back of its head. <laughs> this is so ridiculous looking. I kind of want to like get like arms like right out of here. <laughs> Yay! No. Okay, serious though. Serious. Ser serious stream. Serious. Serious business. <laughs> What's the speed of light? Oh! I don't have the, the exact number. Does that make me dumb? <laughs> Green slime. From Are you guys like just like putting down a whole bunch of D&D? <laughs> oh, there you go. Zomax got it. Hey, Doug. Fish overlords, yes. Yeah, fishy! Okay, so you guys are saying fish. It's gonna be like fish alien, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. I keep saying it's gonna be this, and then it ends up being like something completely different in the end anyways. Because <laughs> the, the whole purpose of this is to just kind of like let the- let- let whatever it is that you're sculpting be what it wants to be. It's like this the scream thing. It's like scream the movie, but fish. You're sculpting hands, then going back to the body? Ah. What are you talking about? Ah, so many fish puns. So many fish puns. <laughs> can, can you guys caption this? Can you guys caption it? Like, what would this thing say? If it could talk, what would its voice be? And what would it be saying? I always like imagining that sort of thing for the creatures that I make. Like, what would it be saying? I'm not gonna say anything just so I can hear what you guys are gonna say. Because I've got my own. Another punny stream. Yeah, but, like, do you expect anything different? <laughs> Try and do some stylized stuff. Nice! Stylizing things is a lot of fun. It's, it's, uh... So much fun I made it my career. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I born? <laughs> Good one. Good one. I agree. Why? Ah, 
I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm a Canuck, eh? I can't even do a Canadian accent. Then. I am a Canadian. I feel like that in itself is is just like sad. I don't know how to exaggerate my own accent. Rip. Mom, mom, why? <laughs> hey, Kyle. Yeep, 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 It would be more like blah, 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 just because of all this flab. I want poutine. <laughs> A letterbox on its side. Oh, you guys are great. You guys are good. But like, in all seriousness, though, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, please feel free to ask. Regardless of, of what you think this thing sounds like. I feel like just making like a ball for a body, to be honest. <laughs> hey Silver, how's it going? Oh, the the alien mum. Okay, got you. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love those so much. I love them. Cheese fries. That's a, that's a dangerous walking area there, Zomax. If you're talking about cheese fries, you better be talking about the right kind of cheese fries. Actually, I'll probably size this whole thing down. Bloop. Bloop. There we go. Just so that it's easier. Easier to work on. Hey Tim, how's it going? <laughs> so surprised. No, they Lena Lena came back. Lena came back. All the all the guys at Pixelogic are still doing their thing. I don't want this to be like a big like nasty growth. <laughs> Just a big like tumor monster. Yeah, let's make a tumor monster. What what what? Why are you why did why did this happen to you?
<laughs> Matt's back? Oh. Oh yeah, no, no, he was back rear, uh, last week. Oh, thank you, Link. Thank you for the plugs. Original cheese fries. Wreck. Wreck. You say disco fries. Mmm. Oh, hey, drummer. Big upper body with. Yeah, no, that's exactly Ferex, exactly. <laughs> Particular playlist when you stream, if you get a link. Yeah, I can give you guys the link. Sure. It's. Just, uh, just kind of like a random bunch of, um, YouTube stuff. Here you go. Yeah, sure, Rack. What's up? What up? I feel like, as I'm sculpting this, I'm gonna start making this expression, like, a lot. Like, I'm gonna just start, like, going like... <laughs> so don't, don't mind me! Don't mind me. It's relevant to my creature, dude. What's up? Pumpkin head, cool old school monster. Oh yeah, that thing's so cool. Old school monster movie. Oh man, good times that I wasn't alive for, but you know, watching it, watching it in 2017. Be one of those kids in the comments. Uh, who's here watching this in 2017? try and uh, even though this thing is gonna be sort of like you know super tumorish I'm gonna try and think about uh, a rib cage structure underneath like regardless of the fact that it is like just a big tumor Got your assignments done. Oh, cool. That's yeah, that sounds like a really cool premise. Let me see. Ooh, machine cancer. Dang. Ooh, huh. 
That's pretty cool. That is, that's a pretty cool idea. That is a very cool idea. <laughs> Hello. Hello, look at my tiny arms. Look at my tiny arms. because I, I made this smaller, the resolution is actually going to um, depend on, you know, the size that you make your model in, in the Z scene. Z scene. The Z scene. Yeah, he's super cool. That's why your old PC died? Uh, maybe, or maybe you needed to dust it more. I'll make the spindly, spindly bits in a bit. Spindly bits in a bit. What's it, what's it supposed to be? We don't know yet. It's just gonna be a thing. It's gonna be a big doomer monster. That's what it's gonna be. Get that iliac crest in there. Get that. Ooh. Boy. Your anatomy. Do you work out? You look like you work out. Oh, thanks, Link. Thank you. You don't have to keep posting that playlist, though. If, if somebody asks for the playlist, then you can post it. But you don't need to. It's okay. I don't... <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mighty. How's it going? Hey, AVBN. Hey, guys. Just gonna, from now on, literally everything that I sculpt is just gonna be like extra thick, no matter what. Oh, yes. I actually like that. Just like flatter on the top. I actually really like that silhouette. That's pretty good. It's pretty cool. But then this whole this whole bit.
What even is happening? <laughs> So I, I tend to do this a lot when I'm just like kind of concepting out like um, secondary details and I don't really know where the creature is going. I just kind of like do a bunch of like random big lines with the dynamic or the damn standard brush. Kind of like, you know, roughly following what I know about whatever anatomy it's supposed to be following. Roughly, anyways, and then I just kind of like work with that. Hmm. <laughs> Look at him! He just wants a hug! He just he love Isn't he cute? Isn't he cute? Isn't he just like the cutest? Alright, let's just see what everybody's typing here. Back abs! Yeah, you need those back abs in case you need to do back ups. Come on. Anatomy. No, really, you don't have back abs though, for real. You shouldn't have abs on your back. This is a creature though, so maybe he does. Change my name to Athexy. I feel like that wouldn't be right. <laughs> oh, existential. That's brutal. It layers of skin folds. Hell, you know it, Ferrix. You you know it. You know it. <laughs> right? He definitely lifts. He lifts with his mouth, though. He lifts with his mouth. Uh, that's about it. His arms look like mine. <laughs> Maybe I'm doing a self-portrait. You're falling behind on your 3D practice? Oh, just sculpt with us then, mighty! Sculpt with us! You would hug it? Yeah, right? Did not like being a do- <laughs> Okay. Sydney did not like being a doomer monster. He thought it took away from his charming personality. He knew he was stunningly good-looking. Sadly, the doomer reputation of sucking the soul out of others made him- Struggle with dating sites. Aw, poor, poor Stan or Sydney. Poor Sydney. Poor Sydney. <laughs> they were things for floating in the air. Oh, you think this thing floats? I, th I don't want it to float. <laughs> maybe on water. Maybe in a swamp somewhere. <laughs> this is totally a soft human-y thing, wreck. Super long tongue. Yeah. Maybe. I wanna I wanna do something disgusting though. <laughs> I feel like all my creatures have long tongues. Theme to sculpt by Swamp Monster. Mighty, do swamp mon anybody who's sculpting along, maybe their theme should be Swamp Monster. That's what it is today. With or without tumors. Oh no! Don't don't tell your your girlfriend's name is Sydney about Sydney the monster. They they won't appreciate it. I can promise you that. This is going to be successful. I feel like this head needs to be tinier, and these arms need to be thinner and longer. 
these legs. I'm going to separate them and then I'll dynamesh them. I need to really push the proportions here. Ooh, creature box stuff. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking I thought you were talking about this guy being a Sydney, because that that definitely sounds like a creature box quote now that now that you're making me think about it. <laughs> you're gonna give it two mat you you want me to give this two massive teeth. And name it and make it a naked mole rat? Mm. Hi, Dillock. How's it going? Ooh, Pacific Rim. Yes. Love it. Oh hey Silver, yeah, I post I I posted a lot of places. Um uh not just uh Instagram, I have a Facebook page, I have a Zebra Central account, I have ArtStation, I have a Twitter. I've got I've got it all, man. Whatever you want to follow, you can follow. They'll all get basically the same. I think Instagram gets my like most of it cuz I just kind of like dump like work in progress is there. Oh, he looks like a- okay, got you. Now see, I want- I want this to be big, but I need these maybe to be smaller. By the way, if you guys didn't know, if you have your clay buildup on and you're pushing stuff around and you're finding that um, a bunch of like s crazy stuff is happening, like let's say you're 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 working on it and it's it's taking from both sides and you don't want that to happen, you can actually just go into your brush palette, go down to auto masking, and then click back face mask right here and then it won't do it it'll it'll just be based on whatever whatever face you're currently working on and then it won't affect any other one just so ya know I'm sorry, its face is making me laugh right now.
<laughs> every time you see a, cre a monster creature box, monologue is running in the back of your head. That's awesome. Keep no, no wreck. No, bad, bad wreck. <laughs> I, isn't the next specific room in production or something? Do they have that in production? <laughs> a cute little buddy it is- yes. <laughs> a tumbler? I had a tumbler before, I just don't really like the format of posting on it, to be honest with you. How long have I been sculpting? I've been sculpting um, for three years now in, in ZBrush. What would, would, what would I capture it saying? Um, something along the lines of... <laughs> Thank you, Reggie. It, it's still got to be, like, super pushed, though. Oh my gosh, Tim, please. No, you're great at what you do. You made a whole game, dude. Like, please. Please. Anything, you, you- the fact that you, like, released a really successful game that even, like, Lyric was playing on his streams, like, please. Come on. That should be your ego boost. <laughs> and and on that note, if you guys don't know who Timothy Rapp is, you should definitely go and check out his segments on ZBrush Live when he is live. Actually, are you after me? Are you tomorrow? Hold on. What's the schedule? You are, yeah, Tim's tomorrow. So if you guys that's disc jam in the uh in the chat. can't decide what I want to do with these legs. I'll figure it out though. Actually, I'll probably... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, this thing looks so stupid right now. Okay, I gotta... I gotta really push this around to make it work. We're gonna make it work though. It's just, you know, I guess stupid beginnings, awesome ends. Let's make it a saying <laughs> for self-esteem purposes. Hey, you're live on the ZBrush Live channel, the official <laughs> Pixelogic. What are you sculpting? Uh, a tumor monster. <laughs> it's fine. Well, I mean, like, if you were if you were sculpting as much as I have to sculpt, like, I was hired as a sculptor at my current job. So literally every day I am sculpting until I have to go home. And if there's no sculpting to do, then I'm surfacing. So it's like, you know, if you're doing it that much, you're bound to know how the program works. Okay, another thing I'm finding is this needs to be wider. We're gonna make this like a tumor monster. Let's like, let's go all the way. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Let's like, let's go all the way here. No halves these tumors, you know? Like, let's just put this into third, stage three, stage four, stage 18. 
Man, I feel like I'm being super insensitive right now. I'm so sorry if anyone is actually going through any of that kind of stuff. I am so sorry. I'm gonna stop saying that now. I gotta check myself. I hope you get better if you are. We're just gonna call him a growth monster. How about that? We'll call him a growth monster. A growth. Hey, Avatar, how's it going? <laughs> My derpness is why you follow me? Oh. <laughs> Your, your third ad? Oh, Rec, that's awesome! That's so good to hear. Super nice monster ref, let's check it out. Ooh, the rose- ooh, okay. I'm, yeah, I'll keep that tabbed. I might check it out. <laughs> Calling me Canadian, man. Come on. Come on, I'm just being, I'm being, I'm, like, you, you never know who's watching and how it can affect them. And that's like a really tough thing to go through, so I'm like, since I'm sincerely sorry if I, if I made it harder for anyone. Yes, boy. <laughs> what even is this? Help, I need an adult. He needs a bigger mouth. <laughs> what to do? Ah, uh, just give it a bigger mouth. It's fine. That'll make your creature look fine. Just, just increase the mouth size. <laughs> you could, you get to go. But for real though, like guys, like if you do have any questions, like, like don't be afraid to ask. I know I'm like kind of spazzy, but. I will try to help you as best as I can if you have any like zebras questions, all that fun stuff. Like, if you're wondering what kind of brushes I'm using or what the process is for some of this kind of stuff, just tell me what it is that you want to know. I'm here. I'm here, boo. Hey, hey, Marshall. Oh no, that does not make me feel any better, Rec. <laughs> British jeans. Now, nah, man, this is a PG stream. Chill. <laughs> oh, Reggie, what you got? Uh, an a crochet. I can't give full critiques, right? Because I gotta keep working. But this is looking really good. You're looking, yeah, it's looking really good. I What I'd say is in the abdominal area, in the pectoral area, it's looking a little bit flat. Um, if you want like proper critiques from people, like if you're sending this to anybody else, I'd, I'd offer some more views than just these ones and a little bit more uh, brighter lighting in the front front area. But overall, your, your muscle placement looks mostly correct from what I can tell anyways. I would just like, yeah, I, I would I would try to make the muscle structure actually feel a little bit more. I'm like doing this, like I don't know why, but like make it more like, like, in, infl not inflated, but make it feel like it has a mass to it. Too many questions? Well, yeah, you can you can ask anything. Start with one, I guess. No, Rack, your sadness doesn't make me feel better. Do you need a hug? 
Are you okay? Do you need me to call someone? There's hotlines. Okay. God, guys, it, it was so hot here. I know this is like really off topic, but I, <laughs> I started the stream like a few minutes late because I was like desperately trying to find something to wear that wouldn't make me like sweat a puddle while I'm streaming for you. <laughs> just like wiping sweat. It's just like getting on the webcam and everything it would be bad. You wouldn't want that. So I'm sure you're you're happy for my two minute delay. <laughs> Don't touch me. Where? Hey, hey, Sean, Sean oh boy, how's it going? Thanks, Link. No worries, I'll try and read it as best as I can, Silver. Cosplay the swamp creature? But I do, every morning, come on. Like, I don't- I don't even- I don't even try. I just wake up and I look like that. <laughs> Looking like this takes effort, man. <laughs> I, I do not look good in the morning. Oh, okay, so I'm feeling this is kind of lump. I don't really need to worry about these arms, but this like, I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more, see what I can get in terms of. Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe if I just make it like really thin and long. That might actually be kind of cool. <laughs> it, exactly, drummer. Exactly. Oh, no, I, I guess I can stop thanking you, Lake, if you're okay with that. I just wanted to acknowledge your presence and how you were actually helping. <laughs> Hey Eric, how's it going? You were chatting in my channel. Oh, het to you too. It is extremely a het. <laughs> I'm kidding, Eric. All right, see ya, Doug. Uh, what do you, what do you do to add separate parts to an entity, like the arms, the legs, to stretch it? That's one question. Okay, so um. The arms, basically what happened is if I go backwards, you see you see what happened here is I actually had the arms uh, pulled out. So I masked off a certain area, right? I masked off an area. Now this is one way that you can do it. This is this is my way, one of my ways. There's multiple ways to do it. And then I just kind of like pull things and then dynamesh it and then mask it off and cut it off, right? And then when it's cut off, it looks like this. So this is this is the cut off arm, and then I do the same thing with the legs. Another thing that you could do is just do an insert sphere or insert cylinder rather. So if you if you kind of do this, so when you drag out an insert cylinder or insert primitive of any kind, if you drag it out, it'll keep increasing in overall size. And then when you stop dragging and then drag backwards it will actually decrease in the overall, like, uh, circumference or diameter. <laughs> and so, you know, circumference, yes. So when you do that, you can get tiny little pegs and your transpose line is just going to be automatically set to the normal direction of the bottom face. And so then you can actually start rotating that and positioning it however you want. 
So that's another way that you can uh, put in arms, and then obviously when it's massed, you can split that off as well. So, hey Suko. Ah, uh, this guy looks good in the morning. <laughs> hey Prodeska, how's it going? Oh man, Eric, you got this. You got this, boo. But how do you mask it? If you hold control with like any any brush, it doesn't matter. Um, if you hold control and then you start, you know, painting on your model, it's going to create a mask. And if you want to get rid of some of that mask, you can hold control and alt, and that will, you know, be an eraser for the mask. And so you can do that with by selecting off of the model and dragging, and you're gonna get like a getting rid of the mask sort of thing. Or if you're off of the model, holding control and doing a mask, you can select that kind of uh, like a rectangle of whatever your your choice is. And another thing to note is you can actually move your selection around by holding the space bar. So if you make a selection and it's like not exactly where you want it and you don't really want to redo that, you just kind of want to move it around, you have to keep holding control, but then also press space bar and you can start moving it around and then release and it'll be where you released it. So, um, there's a bunch, like when you're holding control, uh, there's like a bunch of other, other, um, types of masking that you can select. So if you select mask circle, obviously you're going to get a circle and a, a, a trick with the mask circle, actually, this is, this is a really useful one is if you, if you hold down, you see that you're actually getting more of like an ellipses. Right? And so if you don't want the ellipses, then you can go into your stroke by holding control, go into your stroke because that's going to apply the stroke settings to your currently selected for, you know, whatever, whatever your brush is selected and being displayed right now. So right now I'm holding control. So that means for any masking, this is going to apply. And if you go down into the modifiers and hit center and square, what that's going to do is it's going to do a perfect circle every single time and you can actually put that like anywhere. So that's like really useful for for things like eyes and, you know, making making like, you know, perfect like indents on things or whatever, like whatever you need a circle for, right? It's the same thing with the square. The square uh, does the does the same thing too. So if you had uh, mask rectangle and then you did stroke center square as well it'll do the same thing so you can get like a perfect square if you wanted to do that as well um, and then you've got your mask lasso so you can do more masking by you know drawing a lasso and mask pen is what I would already showed you and then curve is just like making a curve to dictate where that mask is going to show up so there's a lot of options there for your masking. Hopefully that answered your questions. <laughs> hey, Motion Studio. All right. Back to a regular program. Oh, what do you press to separate it? Yes, okay, so that's down in um, in, in your subtool menu. If you scroll down to the, the split palette, you can just do split mask points right here. What's the theme tonight? You guys can make swamp creatures. Swamp creatures. For me, I'm just making like some kind of creepy growth alien thing. <laughs>
What do I think of that? That looks pretty cool, dude. I like it. I'd say stay away from that matte cap, though. Um, you're using red wax to show stuff off, and I just feel like you're better off showing things because it's it's hard to see forms with the red wax red red wax matte cap. So I'd say uh, what you have in the first two images are pretty cool, but um, yeah, no red wax. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get a little bit more of an interesting shape here. Like maybe this stuff can get pushed in a bit. Well, the smallest eyes. <laughs> I am red waxist. I don't. I don't think. Um, I don't think you should use that mater material. <laughs> you started with ZBrush uh, last last year, end of September. Nice, very good. Welcome, welcome. gonna delete these for right now because <laughs> I'm, I'm just not not too keen I was looking at a lot of like mantis pictures the other day and they have like these really crazy eyes that stick out from the sides and if you look at them really close they just they're so they're just like really freaky looking I don't know how to describe it just go and look at mantis eyes they're freaking crazy but I don't think I'm gonna do that
Hmm. Lower. Yep. Lower. There we go. See, now it's get now we're, we're getting into the more interesting territory. More like, okay, that's a that's a crazy shape. That's a cool shape. Hey John, how's it going? How you doing? How you doing, John? If you guys don't know John, go and check him out. He's a boss. He's got entertaining streams and very educational ones too. He's a teacher. But also give Pixlogic a ball, because you know, lots of entertaining people here. <laughs> Besides myself, no. <laughs> Uh, any kind of list of known creepy things to make monsters. Um, well, that just more that really depends on like what it is that I'm sculpting at the time. So if it's like a bug, then I'll like I'll go and like search like really weird Pinterest and stuff, Pinterest boards. I should start making my own though, um, just because I feel like that would that would just save me a lot of time. And having to keep going and looking at other people. I still haven't made my own Pinterest boards. You're still at work! Leave! A mermaid, so your mermaid would be no. No. <laughs> Q point one thing that looks off since you're new to sculpting females. Okay. Okay, so right away, um the the abdominal area, like okay, so I'll, I'll give you two things right now. So the abdominal area, I feel like you're getting a little bit too crazy with just like putting muscles on top of the skin, whereas it should be the other way around. When you're thinking about muscular form, what does it like, you know, the, the abs should be sitting underneath the skin and right now it looks like you're just kind of taking a, um, you know, a clay buildup brush and going over top of the forms that you've already built and I feel like it should be the other way around, you know, like so. Uh, the rib cage you would have like as your primitive base shape sort of an idea and then you would start working uh, your muscles on top of that and stuff like that. So you got to think of like, you know, what are the bones underneath? How do the muscles sit on top? And how does the skin fold over top of the muscles and what part of the muscles can you see and not see? Because right now it looks like you're just trying to show like all of the muscles off, but in reality anybody who has any kind of like muscular like you know kind of a body like a lot of it is actually covered by how skin stretches over top of muscles and how fat fills in a lot of like the holes and sits on top of muscles and stuff like that um, and I and another thing is your legs I feel like bacon your legs need like the bottom part anyways you need to make that longer right now it doesn't feel as proportionate as it could <laughs> on like ankle. No one here is gonna understand that unless they were at the the ridiculous the ridiculous stream yesterday on my channel. Getting warmer? Yeah, it, it was so hot today. Oh my goodness. I feel like we need to make that a saying though, hung like angle. <laughs>
Oops. AC room and melting? Oh, I don't have AC, so the summer is going to be pretty hard for me. You guys are probably- so, in future streams, I just hope that you guys have patience with, uh, with all of the honking outside that you're going to hear, because I have to have the window open, and you're going to hear the fan as well, so that's going to be future streams. Just a heads up, because I don't have AC, and it's way too expensive to run it if I were to buy an AC thing, so... So sorry. So now that I have like the general um, shape kind of like knocked out, I'm gonna try and like break this up into into some some sections that I can start fleshing out more, either making more fleshy or you know breaking it off into panels of some kind, whatever it may be. But they're called secondary details on top of the primary details. I think these arms, if I have them just kind of... relaxed. Oh my god, portfolio. Go back to winter and keep having days like today. Definitely keep the heat. Just finish the mage. Oh, cool! That looks great! That looks really, really great, Suko. Good job. Nice work. I really, really like her what you've done with her face. Very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. I can't. I can't, we can't turn this into like a full-on critique session, though. What do I think of that? I think you're doing a pretty good job. I'd work again, like with the abdominal area. Um, I think that's like the the area that's the most difficult for a lot of people to get, um, because it's 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 hard to understand that you know you shouldn't always be exaggerating it as much as as I guess it is. Um, there is still, because right now what it looks like, Rodeska, is that you don't have any sort of mass underneath the rib cage. Like, it looks like just rib cage, and then the skin falls down onto the pelvis. Like, there's, there's sort of like, it looks like a gaping, empty void in that area. I feel like you need to put her obliques in there. Um... And just have have the abs fill out a little bit more space because in a lot of like medical diagrams you're gonna have the abs looking very like you know almost like symmetrical just like dead in the center uh, but in reality the abs are actually a, like pushed a little bit wider and they're not as apparent in a lot of females unless they're like obviously really jacked you usually can't see a woman's abs as much as you could on a man just because women actually re retain a lot more fat than men do on just just naturally and also in terms of like uh, muscle structure typically I'm not saying everyone but typically um, it's it's more apparent on men to have abs stick out that much 
unless they're like you know these girls are going to the gym or they're extremely eman like emaciated like super super thin in which case you won't have like you'll have them looking very bony at the same time right Yeah, I've got a I've got a tiny fan. It's over on the floor back there, but and I like I just hook it up to my window in the summertime. It doesn't make too much noise, but you're gonna hear like the cars outside and stuff. And I'll look like I'm in a Pantene commercial constantly because my hair is gonna be like. <laughs> Philippe. <laughs> Eric. Philippe, my tiny fan. Multiple arms? I know multiple arms. I don't know. I have it split anyways. To experiment! Mobile AC unit because it's expensive. Most of my, most of my, well, like I have to, I have to pay um, utilities as well here. It's really expensive here.
All right, see you, Rodeska. Have a great night. Wings. Why you got, why you want to put wings on everything? <laughs> or naturally grumps. By the way, uh, what I'm doing here is resizing something. So if I did that, like, so here, I'll show you again. Um, so it's, it's repeating an action. So I can just keep going like shift one, shift one. And I've set it up to be shift one. But what you can do is in your stroke, uh, your stroke palette, if you do replay last, you can actually create a, uh, like, a shortcut like a, a key that you hit and it'll just keep replaying the last action so it's good for like alphas it's good for resizing things it's good for a lot of that kind of stuff um but yeah re, re replay last is is good it's, it's good it's good i have it as shift one Yeah, normally it is just one, but the thing is, like, I put all my brushes on uh, the keys one through zero, so I don't have one as uh, as that hockey anymore. So I put it as shift one. Is my workstation permanent or do you get- no, mine is permanent, I don't get moved around. Hey Mer- Merlin? Time out next. <laughs> Nex approves this trick. <laughs>
No, I'm gonna be ridiculous and push this even more. Because why not? This, I'm wondering if I could make like some sort of like weird stump. I could, hmm. We need like a much wider gate. Forward. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Hmm. Okay. Alright. I'll see how it is. Let me try one more thing. There we go. Yeah, it's better. Let's lower this though. You've got moving. You've got moved seven times. Yeah, my uh, like my last workplace, we got moved around quite a bit. I mean, I was lucky to only be moved around. I think three times in the year that I was at my last work area workplace. Um, but like we moved whole buildings and everything like that so it was just sort of like I knew people like I worked with people that actually had to share workstations with other people and that was kind of like super crap <laughs> like cuz there was a uh, there was like shifts so some people would be coming in from like neighboring studios to work like pre like on days that they weren't working at other studios and they would be they would be taking over people's desks. So it would be like the person standing behind you, being, tapping you on the shoulder, being like, hi, I'm here to use your computer. You'd be like, well, geez, let, let me just finish up then. I didn't have to go through that, luckily, but some people on other projects that were in the same studio as me did, and that was just, that didn't look fun. painting a galaxy while going through an existential cr No, Eric! Eric, what? No. No, don't, don't say that. Announced a Witcher series? Seriously? Oh, that is super hung. That is so hung, like... <laughs> Yo, we're gonna start this as, like, an actual... an actual, uh... saying. That's so hung. <laughs> Hung like Kangol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had to share. Like, you know how like there's like night shifts and day shifts and stuff for some VFX companies? It was sort of like the same thing, except it was like it was like uh swapping studios. It was it's very weird, like how that that the com the company went bankrupt okay like it wasn't run the way it was supposed to be run <laughs> like there was a lot of ethics questions that were happening but i really liked the people that i was working with and had a good time worked on some cool stuff but just, just like yeah <laughs> Because uh, when I was when I was there, 
I was actually coming back from a music festival and they were like, and it was a long weekend too, and they were like, hey, guess what? Like in an email, they were like, don't come in on Tuesday because the whole company's bankrupt. You're all laid off. All 550 of you. Good luck, bye. You're not allowed to get your stuff until we say so. Like, so that was like two months later, I was able to get my stuff. So bad. But stuff happens in this industry, so be ready, be prepared. Always be working on your own stuff at home because something like that can happen at any moment. Like no one knew it was gonna happen. So even if you have a job, always be working on your stuff at home because you, you seriously never know. And especially if the place that you're working at doesn't allow you to take your work that you're working on there with you, which is actually pretty common. If they don't do that, then you know, if they go out of business, what are you going to do? So you need to always have your own work at home. Don't always rely on studio work to get you jobs unless you're like 10 years into the, <laughs> the, the business. Hey Shane, how's it going? Yeah, the, the sharing thing was super weird. It's already begun, yeah. Everybody said, like, if you think something's, like, crazy or cool or, like, intense, just be like, yo, that's so hung. <laughs> Use the hashtag hung like Kangol. <laughs> start, start a trend. Start, starts with, starts with the, the A-Cube crowd. Yeah, the close- so I, I just- usually if something is acting really messed up, I do have a fixed mesh integrity, which is down in the- in the geometry section, because sometimes, like, your- your mesh can get completely wacko. So if you go into your geometry tab and then go all the way down to the mesh integrity, if you do check mesh, it'll be like, hey, we're checking your mesh, and then you can fix it if you really want to. So what that does is it goes and it closes holes, it, um... It like merges vertices, like, you know, uh, points that are really close together that might not, you know, be recognized as the same one and stuff like that. Like, it kills laminate faces and all that kind of stuff. Yes, my, my workspace has like my little, like, so when we moved, because I moved buildings uh, for this new place that I'm working at as well, like I moved uh, once. And I had like to had to put my names on like, you know, my Cintiq, on my chair, on my like all that kind of stuff. So I had all these name tags. Now at my desk at work, I just have like these stickers of my name, like every like I've claimed. <laughs> I was like fine. <laughs> Crimson, <Crimson's> no, it doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, it is part of the industry, unfortunately. Shade's right. It just sucks because, like, that was my that was my first job too. No, lamina. I sorry, lamina faces. I didn't mean to say laminate. If I said laminate. Oh yeah, no. If you're doing like fixed mesh and you have UVs, don't do that. That's not no. Same with closed holes. If you have UVs, like, be careful about that kind of thing. But if you're doing something like, usually what ends up happening is you get your, your mess ups, like, with, uh, with, with, with these kinds of dynameshy sort of things. Lemony faces, yes. 
Yes, you, you told me, Link. Sounds good. Trending topics on Twitter tomorrow. Hung like Hangle. I would feel so successful if you guys if you guys did that. I'd be so proud. I'd be telling everybody. I'd be like, I have a Snapchat to show you. I can't show you here. <laughs> but... Uh, why don't you make a startup? They don't have specifically how to give a studio. Yeah, no, dude, like... They, you know, it, it is hard. It is hard. And everybody who's in the industry knows how hard it is. People outside of the industry might not understand how difficult that is. Um, but yeah, just, yeah, I feel you. There's just such a concentration, like, especially like character art to, uh, to maintain a job in character art. There's just such a like high concentration of people who are character artists or want to be character artists. And just studios in general, like I find the biggest problem with a lot of studios is they overbid on stuff. And they they assume their artists can get things done in in a certain, you know amount of time, but they don't actually take in consideration that these are human beings. I mean, that's like, that's not true. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying like all studios do that, but I know for the one that I was at, it was more of like, you know, oh, our studio is so amazing. Our artists are so amazing. We can get this done for a super cheap amount of money. And so basically they, they underbid everything. Sorry, not overbid. They underbid everything that they were taking. They were like, yeah, like, you you only have to pay us, like, you know, half of what you normally do. You had so many projects. So many projects that it just feels like the, like the management was just all over the place. And no one, no one knew, like, where I was before. Like, no one had their contracts, like, renewed ever. Like, people who were working there whose contracts were expired by... Man, like some some people their contracts were expired by a year and they were still working there so it's just like in terms of like ethics like these people could have like gotten laid off like at any point and they wouldn't have been able to fight it there wouldn't have been every, any kind of like severance because it's just like oh well huh, guess what like your contract was up so sucks to be you it's just it's just uh yeah <laughs> There's a reason why that went out of business. There's a reason why a lot of companies that go out of business go out of business. It's usually management. Like mis mismanagement. <laughs> no, Link, you're fine. Yo, freelance is hard enough on its own. Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> yeah, er Eric's right. Eric's also a character artist. He knows. He knows what's up. He's working, working in a uh, game studio. Doing pretty neutral right now. Neutral is better than bad.
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this all so it has a flat. Ooh, that's not that's not even close. That's not even close. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit and then cut them. So it's sitting on like a flat surface. Same with this one. It's a mouth next. It's a mouth. <laughs> Seven studios, dang. Shane, you've been. That's actually really impressive that you've been able to stay so long at so many studios. He's definitely a hugger. Am I making cuts in perspective? I am, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. See? If you were making more mechanical cuts though, definitely take perspective off. Oh, Shane. <laughs> I guess I guess that's I guess that's pretty true though. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to take like a quick break and I'll give you guys chair stream. Well, I'll take a quick break. And I'll be back in just like a couple of minutes, okay? Promise. Promise.
Boogie boogie boogie. Hello. I am back. I did say there was gonna be a chair street, but there was like literally no chair in that street. Ha 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 ha. Jokes on you. <laughs> um. Okay. Let me get rid of that. BRB. <laughs> Stranger Things 2? Yeah, Faye Faye. Oh my gosh. What should you skill for fun? Monsters! Hey, Gento. You came for the chair you left disappointed. <laughs> oh my god, Reggie, your remote game though. Too legit. Alright. Um Tentacles. You know what I haven't done in this stream is save. <laughs> Guys, you should save. If you're working on anything, save. Nobody's reminded me to save. So I didn't know how to save. There's no mods in this stream. I'm a mod, don't don't cross me. <laughs> what's the what's the uh it, it's just kind of like a random thing that I started sculpting at the beginning of the stream and now we're here seeing what it turns into. Just playing with shapes and silhouette. Letting you guys watch how I go through this sort of a process. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. It's actually pretty bad that I'm just like so used to you guys telling me when to save that I just don't save anymore. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, okay, I see a Shane T there. That he was a mod. He was a mod. <laughs> now, now we're dead. <laughs> no, you guys are great. You guys behave. It's good. <laughs> you need us now. Why do I use snake hook until, instead of something like move? Okay, so that's actually a really good question, and a lot of people ask me that. The reason why I use snake hook instead of the move tool is, like, specifically because of how fast it moves things. So if you see here on like this sphere, this is the snake hook moving something, right? So it just kind of like doesn't stop, and like it will keep pulling the points even though there's going to be like fragments and errors and things like that. But that's okay because like you can get you can get used to how how to use that like high sensitivity move. If you're using just like the move brush, you know, it's it's a lot slower in my opinion anyways and you you get like this like you get you get kind of like the same average shape every single time that you're pulling it. So for me, I actually really enjoy using the snake hook because there's a lot of like really crazy sort of like random accidents that can come out of it just by just by like fragmenting your your sphere. And I know that sounds insane, but like I've I've just like gotten really used to using um, the snake hook brush. And so when it's fragmented like that, like I don't mind going to a low dime mesh and then like now all of a sudden you have like these these interesting sort of like, you know, like the fragments turn into something of some kind. And then from there, you just kind of like, you know, go whoosh, 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 whoosh. But I just like generally like the, uh, the overall um, sensitivity of the snake hook brush and what it does in terms of like curves and things like that. I've just gotten used to that. So, and this is, this is just generally like how I would start, like the sculpt that you were just looking at is I would just do something like this and then, and then find, you know, like a monster in it, but I'm not going to work on that one. I'm going to keep working on this one, <laughs> which did start like that. Actually, we started back here, right? So you can see how this, hold on, you can see kind of like how this progressed. So I was just like mucking stuff around. Muck, 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 muck. Muck, muck, muck. Muck, 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 muck. And then eventually we get our strong shapes in there the way that we like them. And now we're here. So it evolves, right? Like you just kind of have to keep pushing it around and stuff. Shane likes using the snake hook on a low setting. I like using it at a C to intensity of 100, but at a low a low setting, it actually is, uh, you can get a lot of control out of it as well. But I, I, I'm, a, I'm a strange creature. Like the, the way that I actually first started using ZBrushes, I saw the snake hook brush. <laughs> when I first opened ZBrush, I was like, huh, brushes, okay. And I saw the snake hook brush, and specifically because it was called the snake hook brush, I just started using it. <laughs> and I wasn't watching tutorials or anything when I first started using ZBrush, so it was just sort of like, well, I guess I'm using this now, and I just got really used to it because I didn't know that there was a move brush. <laughs> I just was like, snake hook! And I just liked it more, and yeah, I just now I just use it. I just use it, you know, it's not, it's not something that you have to do, but I find it works really well for me. Move is way less hung. <laughs> you have to make that noise. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> hang and take. Wait, should it hang entangled in some creeper tree branch? Yeah! <laughs> please, please tell me. Wait. Muck, muck, muck when I'm at work. I, I don't say muck, muck, muck. I say other things. <laughs> 
I think I think today I made farting noises at the sculpt that I was making. I don't know if anybody heard me, but I was making farting noises because I didn't like what I was doing and I wanted to restart it, but I didn't have time, so I had to like struggle through it. <laughs> Am I yeah, like on the side you can hear me clicking around with a mouse and then I also have my pen as well with my Intuos Pro. So is a tablet, you can use that for sculpting. It's better to sculpt with a tablet than it is uh, a mouse. <laughs> you get way more control. Just way better. Way, 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 way better. No, you clipped that. Ugh, worst. Hey, Kevlar. It's going good. It's going good. How are you doing? You've been using pretty standard tools. You'll think you're going to be more experimental. Yeah, you just like grab random brushes, right? And like, don't forget too, in the light box, like in the brush palette, there's all of these brushes here for you to like play around with. Tons of them. Actually, I'll show you a few things that will, you know, rock your world. Uh, so smooth brush, you know, if you go into your light box brush palette and then you find the smooth folder. There's this magical thing called Smooth Stronger right here. Now all of these do different things, which you should definitely exper uh, experiment with. Like, I really like Smooth Valleys and stuff like that. Um, but Smooth Stronger is amazing for high poly stuff because it just it's basically just double the strength of a normal smooth brush. So when you're when you're smoothing stuff out here, let's 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 get a Let's get an example. Is it it works a lot stronger, right? You can see that working like way, way stronger than the other smooth brush that I had. Um, and then another one is Nex showed me this one a little while back, and I've been using it like crazy too. Is the slash slash two brush? And that one is is super cool for making ridges and scales and and stuff like that so you can get some really cool patterns actually i'm gonna keep that good job good job me um <laughs> so you can you can make like all kinds of like really cool kind of like you know designs and stuff with uh with a slash two brush and there's like there's there's just so much in here that you should play around with in terms of like figuring figuring out what you like to use and stuff just play around with a lot of this stuff there's uh, there's stitch brushes as well for for doing um, well clothing stitches and then there's this thing called RAM which is like an intense version like an intense like hard surface version of uh, of uh, the damn standard so if you if you wanted to make like you know hard surface cuts and things there's this uh, this RAM brush which is really cool. So you can get some like cool detailing and stuff from the RAM brush. And all this stuff is not any like your general like, you know, it's not it's not going to be found in your brush menu. It's going to be up in the light box. How many years have we been using ZBrush? 3. Yes, snake hook if you want to pull things to a point. Eric's Eric's exactly right. Do the slurp. You want slurps? Is that what you guys want? <laughs> yeah, I'm super pro like I'm the most professional. <laughs> it creeps you out? Good. <laughs> what tablet? Uh, the Intuos Pro Medium. You use your mouse with Z Modeler? Oh, well, I mean, you're a brave soul. I can't- I, I feel like I work way slower in ZBrush if I'm using a mouse. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I laugh- I laugh at all of my own jokes. I am my best audience. And my worst audience. <laughs> See, like, I just did it again! I always laugh at my own jokes. It's like, hey guys, make sure you know that this is actually funny what I'm saying. <laughs> it wasn't for the camera controls? Oh, you get used to that though, Derp. When I first started using ZBrush, it was- it was pretty- it was pretty- pretty different from uh, what I was used to, but 
I did get used to it. After after about like a week of using it, it was just sort of like, you know, natural. It's just like anything when you're jumping into another program, it's going to be weird at first. Yeah, I know. At least someone laughs at me. It's fine. <laughs> did, did I try mixing sci-fi surface with organic monsters? Yes, I have done that before. It's like a sitcom laugh track. <laughs> Anime character for your stream anniversary? Oh, yo! I don't know, man. I think I would butcher that. You can try. So many softwares that have learned like six different people. Yeah, there you go. Rex got it. It's okay, portfolio. It's okay. Hey Adnan, how are you going? How you doing? You laugh with me most of the time, but not all the time. Sometimes you're just like, man, what is this what is this girl even? It's okay, I get that a lot. He looks like he has turrets. No, I'm gonna put that back. <laughs> My shoulder blades are turrets. I lift so much that I could take down an air force. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot flak from my shoulder blades. Military hates me. Here's five tips how. What material am I using? I am using um, Glauco Longi. You know what? I'm yeah. Glauco Longi materials. You can go and Google that. You'll find his gum road.
Oh, ZBrush Guides is another good one, but that's not what, what I'm using right now. Just don't do Charizard. <laughs> You don't laugh during the slurping noises? What, you want more slurping? <laughs> Stop laughing. More slurps. Oh, guys. The, the, the allergies are kicking in again. I'm so sorry if I start sniffling. <laughs> Overthrow the Empire using this one weird trick. Yes. Exactly. Uh, it's okay, Zuriel. When I'm making monsters, a lot of the time it does have very provocative looking shapes involved in them, just because I feel like that kind of stuff is so weird. It's just like, you know, it, it's one of those things where if you want something to look off-putting, you just, you just add that, you know? There's no offense taken, because it's partially intentional. Only partially. <laughs> Geiger would agree. <laughs> Geiger would agree. See, that depends. That really depends, Kev. And I'm not gonna get into this situation, or, like this, this sort of like conversation with you guys. Well, that really depends. I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> yes, the Z yes, the xenomorphs. The Xenoforms. The Xenos. I I am a total creep. You're right. I am the, the creepiest.
Okay, I keep like opening and closing this thing, but like I can't I can't settle on like one over the other. Yeah, no, I know, Spiro. That's the idea. Looks gross, right? Yeah, no. Doesn't work that way. Oh! Hey, come back. these down and then I'll just duplicate these as a whole Yeah, I learned on my own, Ziri. So, like, at first I would just, like, start playing around with stuff um, in ZBrush. Like, I never really, like, had, like, a goal when I first started. Like, I didn't actually even know that I wanted to be a character artist. I was just, like, I really like ZBrush, but I was in animation school, so it was just sort of, like, no, there weren't really, like, classes for ZBrush or anything like that, so it was just, like, I had the access to a license, so I would, like, just kind of mess around in it. And then I eventually started, like, watching tutorials online and stuff, but by then I was already corrupted with my own horrible ways. But, hence the snake hook.
<laughs> corrupted. <laughs> uh, free courses and then not the paid one. Yeah, like I, I did. So right now, like, um, ZBrush came out recently. Not not too recently, but recently enough. Um, with uh, ZBrush, um, what's it called? Z Classroom. So. So if you want to learn ZBrush, that's like one of the best places to go to. Yeah, there you go, Eric. Yeah, if you if you just like start now, like if you're just give it a couple of years and you're gonna be killer at it. Yeah, no age required to start anything. That is a very good point. Like, don't ever tell yourself, hey, I'm too old. Like, I had my chance. Like, I should, like, be doing other things. Like, that's not true. Like, you can always start, you know? Like, you're gonna regret if you don't and you wanted to. So it's just like, who cares about your age? When are pe wire pens never around when you need them? I, I don't know. It's like they fall into, like, this other dimension or something. Yeah, don't don't worry about your age. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome, Kid Darkness. That's awesome. You're in animation school and you do some ZBrush work? Oh, cool. Yeah, I graduated from, uh, like, a mostly traditional but generalized 2D uh, animation program. And I didn't want to do that for a living, but I still have my bachelor's. Dark, you're, you are not too old to do anything. Just get into it. Alright, good night, Seagull. <laughs> Just be haunted. <laughs> what song is it? Oh, this is uh yeah, my my YouTube playlist right now of uh, copyright free stuff. Tentacles. <laughs> the tentacles will have something special on them though. They'll be special enough. Thanks for the plug link. Yeah, if you guys are interested in this sort of like stuff i do this like right now on my stream not not this is pixelogic stream but on my stream i'm going to be working on the uh trojan horse was a unicorn challenge 
uh, every Tuesday I'll be live with that so it's girls and monsters basically so if you're interested in seeing the progress on that stuff you can feel free to follow me we have a lot of shenanigans usually Do I model for a specific reason, example, gaming video, or do I just model? Yeah, I am a, currently I'm a character artist for feature film. Um, so I make characters for actual production. Uh, this, this is not, you know, this wouldn't be used for production, this sort of thing. This is just for the sake of sculpting. This is just for the, the fun of it, you know? Um, but yeah, yeah, I definitely, I definitely do that. And if you're curious, I have been working in the industry for two years. Two, two years? Almost two years. Not quite two years yet, maybe a year and a half. Year and a half? No, two years. Two years, yes, it's been two years. Has it been two? Yes, we should. Be. Yeah, two years. <laughs> Man, I'm bad at this. I've worked on three projects. Been in the industry for two years. How do I get hired? Okay, so getting hired for me was a mixture of being in the right place at the right time when they desperately needed someone and actually having something good in my portfolio to send them. So um, it was at it was at ARC uh, in Toronto, ARC Productions, which is one of uh, Toronto's biggest animation studios like when it was around, but it had ended up getting uh, bankrupt. It went into bankruptcy. Um, so, oh, actually, hold on one second before I get into this, <laughs> lose my train of thought. Um, so what ended up happening is, uh, they were like, I, I hunted them down a lot. So I went to a job fair. I talked to them when they came into the industry day, like, cause I was one of the only people, one of very few people that actually made like a 3D film. And I had to learn all of that by myself. And I was explaining my process and everything to these people. And at the time they didn't show any interest, so I didn't think that I was gonna get hired with them, but I kept trying. I went to a job fair, I went to talk to them there, I went to show them new work and all that kind of stuff. And then I would email and constantly be in contact with the HR until finally they got back to me and they had an offer. And like after, after an interview, of course. And then I got my job and it, it turned out it's because they just desperately needed somebody to fill a role and they couldn't find any people that had character art in their portfolios at the time and so I got lucky in that sense but the portfolio that I had applied with like two years ago was really bad like it would not have gotten me a proper job because it didn't have proper wireframes in it you definitely need wireframes in your work if you're going like in your portfolio if you're gonna you know, expect to get any kind of a job in this industry. You need to have your wireframes for sure. You need to show anatomy if you're gonna be a character or creature artist. You you need to show that you you understand UVs and um, packing and just topology in general. You need to under you need to understand all of that stuff. You need to demonstrate it as well. And I I barely did that in my first my first demo reel. So. I got lucky, not gonna lie. Oops. There we go. Yes, I just bankrupt the companies, absolutely. <laughs> it's 
See, depending on like you, you have to be good about your pushiness, right? Like you can't you can't be in their face all the time. You can't be sending them an email like twice every day or something like that. You have to be, you know, considerate. But after you talk to somebody in HR from a company, definitely follow up with them to show that you're interested, to make sure that they remember you, um, explain how you met them, like you know, where you met them, uh, you know, you that you enjoyed speaking with them, that you want to speak further. Um, etc. etc. Because then you're opening up a conversation, and like if you're if you're not doing that, then they're not going to remember you because HR talks to so many people, so many people that your portfolio is just going to be one in like, depending on where you're applying to, right? But you have to make sure to really put yourself out there. Yeah, like, it, exactly. Like, you, we, we all get lucky with our first jobs. Uh, it's the first job that is the hardest, and then after that, it gets easier. Um, like, for example, now I know exactly what I need to have in my portfolio. I need to, I know what I need to show people, and I have a lot of examples now from working in the industry that proves that I can do what it is that, you know, companies would be asking of me. So it should be the same for you guys as well. But to get ahead of that bar is to show now that you know what the workflow is. But for somebody who is like, I, I was, I was like self-taught, like internet, like, you know, like I was watching YouTube videos and stuff like that. So. I didn't have a proper idea of like how everything should have went when I first started working. I do now, absolutely I do now, but before it was kind of it was shooting in the dark. Yeah, sometimes like even the best people, like somebody who would be perfect for a job just wouldn't get hired specifically because it's not the right time, you know? Like it's just like something happens and it's just not the right time for them to get hired and somebody else that, you know, maybe knew somebody would get hired instead of that person that is extremely talented. So it's it, there's there's a lot of different factors that come into play. And you just have to be, you just have to make sure that you're doing your best to keep in contact with HR and make sure that your portfolio is demonstrating what the job description is asking of you. You like to move to Canada? Ah. Yeah, college is really expensive. Self-portrait sculpt in Adventure Time style. What? Maybe. First project you got involved in was Split Second Monster Flick. Ooh. Five days a week and three times per day. I think they just got fed up and gave you a try. Oh my god, that's amazing, Dark. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that to anybody else, though. Like, don't, don't actually do that. Throw out all your portfolio pieces except the best one. Um, that that depends, Cold. If there is like a big gap between like, you know, the one one portfolio piece that you have that looks really, really good and like the other stuff, like let's say you you had like a huge jump in uh in what you've learned, then yeah, I'd say just don't show the really crappy stuff because your portfolio is honestly only as strong as your weakest piece. So if they're if they're looking through and they they see stuff, oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. And then like you've got like this really crappy piece of crap. And then they're just kind of like, "Wait, but then that's a possibility that they're going to create that sort of a thing when they're working here." And we don't want that. 
so keep that in mind. Learn all you can about Drake before moving to Canada. <laughs> well, specifically Toronto. If you move to Toronto, there's a lot of Drake. <laughs> there's there's a lot of Drake. Ooh, yes, save water Drake files. Okay. Man, I've barely done anything on this guy. I gotta actually work. My, my turtle, yeah, oh my god. Thank you for the plugs link. If you guys are interested in this, go check out my, uh, my Twitch channel, which you can see in both what link is posting as links in the description or at the, over there, at the bottom hand side of my screen. Do a Drake sculpt. Ugh. No, no, not doing it. Mm -mm. Yeah, we're almost at a milestone over at my my thing. Also, definitely give uh, Hit Picks Logic up for a follow if you haven't already. There's tons of really great artists and more coming as well that you can check out. Um, they've got lots of great content on here, and different artists are streaming every day, so you will always have something to watch. But if you if you have an interest in me specifically and what I do, you can feel free to follow over at my channel. Definitely hit the channel that you're currently watching up for a follow. It's worth, totally worth. Lots of people from different uh, different levels of experience presenting here. Uh, yeah, what's up, uh, NPHNTS? I'm just gonna call you NP. One with your inner Drake, yeah. <laughs> uh... 
Uh, <laughs> where where did I study? I went to Sheridan College for animation, animation, uh, animation, animation bachelor. Definitely did not learn ZBrush there, though. <laughs> Learned that on my own, slash using YouTube. Oh, so your sculpt progress in the Discord? Nice! Okay, I'll check it out afterwards. Have a great sleep, Mighty. Oh, you applied to Sheridan? Oh, you got in! Cool! Are you there now? Oh, Link. Yes, I'll save again. Link! Alright, see you, Ferex. Oh, it's too expensive, right? Okay, got you. Yeah. It is. It's triple the tuition. It's it's pretty brutal. Yeah, there's a Discord. I can get it to you for a second. Hold on. One sec. Um, I mean, there's a Pixelogic Discord, but then I also have my own Discord. I'll be linking you to my Discord if you want the Pixelogic one. I don't know how you can find that one, but they have a separate one for that. Oh yeah, Link, you got it. <laughs> Nefence, okay. Sculpts. Little parts separately, but the brush is gonna make them like sheets, like 2D or whatever. Oh, oh, okay, so are you talking about back face masking then? Hold on, I'm gonna demonstrate something to you and then you can tell me if that's what you're talking about. Um, so if I am working on this and I start doing something here. Is this what you're talking about? Because if you if you want to not have that happen, that's that's because it's working on both sides. Um, you can actually click uh, in your brush palette down in auto masking right here. It's a back face mask and you click that and then when you start working on stuff, you're not going to have that same problem right there. So brush palette, auto masking, back face mask. Uh, 
What did I learn at Sheridan? I studied animation, uh, mostly 2D traditional animation. That's what the bachelor's for animation is mostly. Like they're implementing 3D now, but like when I was when I was going to school, um, I was part of the 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 school's first uh, 3D. 3D film, like, group film. And, uh, they didn't have any real, like, good 3D classes or anything, so a lot of it was self-taught. And I think now they're trying to branch more into, uh, 3D as well. Have any programs for foreigners to study a master degree? Yeah, you can you can get your masters at Sheridan. I don't know exactly what masters they offer though. Oh, and it's gonna be over in one week. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, you can check out Sheridan. It's pretty expensive though. You need a lottery ticket? Well, if you can, like, take out- I don't know how comfortable you are about, like, um... So you're- <sighs> Yeah, actually, I don't know. I don't know about that. I was gonna say, um, for- for here, like, if you're living here, you can get an Ontario student loan to go to, uh, to go to school. That's how I did it, because it was, like, way too expensive for me. 
That was, uh, that helped a lot. And now they're actually offering a lot of tuition for free for students, which sucks because my year I had to pay everything and I'm not getting any kind of like a refund or anything like that. And all of the, all the people going to school now are getting way more of a break in terms of grants and bursaries and stuff like that. A little bit salty? Yeah. Just a little. Just a little. Just a bit. But also happy that more people can go to school. So I guess that's a good thing. Oh, dude, I- you don't have to tell me, Chris. Living- living in Toronto is, like, the most expensive thing. Like, I mean, okay, like, if you were in Vancouver, it would be worse, or London, or whatever, but, like, it's really- it's not great here, <laughs> in terms of, like, pricing. Oh, thanks, Reggie. Uh, Nomen School, yeah, Nomen is really great, but they're really like they're they're way more expensive. <laughs> like, <they're>, oh, <laughs> but they're good. They're really good. Uh, how often do you try to learn more about the anatomy of different creatures and try to apply it to your work? You're curious how much you need to prepare for, before you start a new project. This really depends on how you learn, right? Like, I can't tell you exactly what you need to do before you do anything. Um, I'm very much a visual learner, so I pick up a lot of um, anatomy and shapes and form just by looking at something and analyzing it, visually analyzing it. And I, I can retain that information after looking at it in depth for a while. Some people need to do it over and over and over again until it clicks, like actually like drawing it out. And that's totally okay as well. For some things I need to do that as well. Um, when it comes to like creatures, for me, like if I'm just trying to get like a random sort of, uh, sort of sculpt like this happening, I just, I just kind of like flip through a whole bunch of like really random bugs, like random fish, random like, you know, rodents that I've never seen before, all that kind of stuff. Like I'm just like looking through a whole bunch of pictures and I'm making note like mentally like which ones I kind of like. And then I put my references away because um, for me, I actually feel like if you have your references up on your screen, this is for concept purposes only. I'm not talking about like if, you know, you need to make a specific thing. Like if you need to make a dog, you get those references of a dog up on your screen and you use those references. When I'm talking about like concepting things, I feel like as a as, for for me personally, if I have images up on the screen, a lot of the time I become almost like a slave to them and I feel like I find myself looking at them too frequently. So um, having artists, different artists' artwork up on the screen next to me, I feel like isn't necessarily the greatest thing for me because then I'm just literally grabbing from their artwork. Um, to use it as a jump off point, to use it as sort of like an inspirational point is sort of the goal for me when I'm grabbing references um, and starting something in terms of like concepts. So if I don't understand like how something works, let's say, you know, for these tentacles, let's say after the stream, you know, I really liked this, whatever this monster thing was. And I was just like, okay, well, I need to actually make this anatomically better. <laughs> then what I would do is I would go and be like, okay, well, let's go and look at actual tentacles. What can I put into what I have already in terms of shape and stuff and make it look more believable and all that kind of stuff, right? So in terms of concept thing, I feel like it's better to not be a slave to reference. 
Um, but if you're just getting into art and you don't know anything about an anatomy or anything like that, before you start concepting, before you start jumping into all these crazy designs and stuff like that, which you absolutely can do on your free time and your, your own spare time, but don't expect it to be a portfolio piece if you don't understand basic anatomy, if you don't understand, um, you know, basic design language and all that kind of stuff like if you if you don't have those fundamentals down pat then i don't think that you can jump into something like this i feel like if you study that stuff for a while make sure that you actually have an understanding of anatomy have an understanding of how design works then you can start doing stuff without looking at reference all the time Pay 32k back. Yeah, I feel you, Marshall. I had to pay 40k back. It was brutal. Living in Toronto is not fun. Feeling like a hobo. <laughs> uh, you do quick so you have fun and buzz them up so quickly. And when you are working on the human feel, it feels like a slug because you're not because you're you're using reference, and that's important though for you because you don't. You, you're learning, right? It's a learning thing. So studies usually go slower because you're doing a lot of analyzing and that's okay, right? So if you're studying something, definitely be using reference and definitely have all that stuff up on your other screen. If you have another screen, I recommend that for your workstation if you don't, um, if you can afford it and have that second screen as your reference monitor and just constantly be looking at it when you're actually doing what you're doing and it's going to slow your progress down it's definitely going to slow like not not your progress as an artist but your progress in terms of like how fast you're sculpting something and not, it's not all about speed speed will come from doing it over and over and over again right like that's that's just something that you're going to learn you're just going to get better at the program it's going to go a lot faster but you just need to put the time into actually doing these studies first before you jump into that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, no, no worries. Uh... Now, you you can you can feel free to ask. I won't always be able to reply. Like if you ask during these streams, like for sure, like that's what I'm here for. But like I'm I have like I'm pretty busy. <laughs> but if you do, if you ask it in the Discord, if I'm not available, then somebody else might be there to help answer your question. And a lot of people in the Discord, a lot of people who watch, uh, who watch who watch uh, my segments, know a lot about. ZBrush and just like you know the industry and 3D modeling in general so and not just modeling but also lighting and rigging and all that kind of stuff there's lots of lots of really talented people who watch this stuff as well so don't don't feel afraid to ask other people and also if you haven't followed Pixelogic please do because if you're finding what I'm saying useful I can guarantee you're gonna find what everybody else who is streaming on this channel extremely useful as well um, they have lots to offer. They've been in the industry for a long time. Oh, my thesis film was so bad though. I did it, like, okay, so... I had to teach myself 3D. It was not good. <laughs> um, and my thesis film, I ended up... Like, I had to, I had to do the whole process. I had to learn how to rig, I had to learn how to model properly, I had to learn the whole shebang by myself, which was stressful, and I had eight months to do it, but I ended up animating the entire thing and rendering the entire thing in the last week before it was due, which I, I don't recommend you do at all. But if you really want to see it, if you really- ooh, should I? I don't know. It was really bad. It was uh, it was really bad. Yeah, it was it was a really it was a huge stress. It was a huge ball of stress. I've never been so stressed out in my entire life. That was the the hardest the hardest thing I think I've ever done. To be honest with you guys, um, school was harder than the, <laughs> than working. I I really enjoy working. But if you really wanted to see it, I can find it for you, I guess. <laughs> 
if you want to see really bad a really bad film okay all right so this is this is when this is how i started to learn how i started to learn it okay let's find my hold up give me a second guys try and find it for you oh my god i can't believe i'm showing you this <laughs> All right, so this is how I learned how to how to do anything in 3D. Here you go. This is where I started. That's where I started. That link right there. Enjoy it. Eric's like, "Oh god, why are you doing this? You're going to be ruined." Like, well, that's where I started, right? Like, I guess it's a good it's a good place to show it's a good thing to show people. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. You knew that I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. Like... It was, it was a stress fest, though. I did so much in the last, like... Anyways, whatever. The voice acting, me and my friend. One of those is me. <laughs> Can you guess which one? Yeah, I went right into the industry, exactly, like, right after school. I was not- I didn't have a job for about a week after I graduated, that's it. And I was- I was working. That turtle- that turtle was the turtle that got me my job, like, my first job. <laughs> I was definitely George. No, I wasn't George. I was George in my animatic. Oh my god, my animatic was like, oh! Oh, my animatic was, like, brutal. It was basically that entire thing that you just saw, but animated in 2D, because it was way too fleshed out for what it was. Which is fine, because, like, if I didn't finish my, uh, if I didn't finish my 3D portion of it, at least I would have had the animatic to just flesh out, and then I would have graduated. I was really worried. I was really worried I wasn't gonna graduate. I did not, like, for, for the last week, I didn't sleep. I was just like, okay, I gotta get this, gotta get this done. And the animation is so bad. It's so bad, it doesn't reflect what I could have actually done, just because of, like, how fast I had to get that out. And my rigs kept, like, breaking, and it was just, it was a nightmare, because I had to keep, like, fixing my own rigs. Ugh. No, he died. If you listen to the very end, um, they die. <laughs> it took me the night that it was due to render. I rendered it in viewport. <laughs> I comped it! I comped a viewport- like, I'm not even kidding you guys. Like, I couldn't use the render farm at school because somebody had clogged it with one frame. So they put the same frame into the render farm maybe like 800 times. And I couldn't use this. I couldn't use the render farm and it was due the next day so I was just like, well, okay. And so I had to switch all of my materials from mental ray materials to viewport. So it was not even PBR, it was like, not that it was PBR before, but I mean, I had to like last minute like switch up my materials. And that was freaking, that was dope. <laughs> God, I'm feeling like all PTSD right now. Like, I don't want to go back to that. I don't even know how I got that in. It was like the minute it was due, it was in the folder. And I just like, 
I felt like I was just gonna fall asleep right there. You're just like, oh, it's done. <laughs> Now known as Fred Cute. <laughs> Your school had it way worse. Oh man, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm glad you guys liked it. Anyways, with my like shitty writing. So hung. <laughs> hung like angle. You're learning so much. Oh, I'm so glad. Another question, how is your social life at Sheridan? Horrible! <laughs> if I wasn't, if I wasn't like, if I wasn't at a party or drunk, then I was at home by myself. That's, that's how it was. Eric's all like, yo, you weren't by yourself, though. No, Eric was with me a lot of the time. At least for the last year. Uh, we, we, went to, we went to school together. <laughs> oh, I, I appreciate it, Kevlar, but the, those animations, they could have been, like, so much better. So much better. But I had- that was the most rush I think I've ever done any animation. <laughs> you went outside once, the graphics weren't that great. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Overrated, no. I love outside. I love outside. I love it. Students aren't great? No. Yeah, that, that bites. When the students don't care, and that's like a, just a crappy environment, you need everybody to be like super hyped up, you know? Like everybody wants to do what they're doing. And then, and then that inspires you to do more. Oh, thanks, Reggie. Thank you. Twenty. Oh, you're leaving. Okay. Wow, that made it sound so much worse. What you just said, Silver. <laughs> I was like, Rock. What do you mean, Earth? Why are you leaving? <laughs> we need the tourist money. <laughs> New England. Oh man. Would I still do some animation? That really depends. That really depends. I don't- I'm not like a huge fan of it, to be honest, so I try not to market myself as an animator. Um, if I had to as a generalist position, then sure, but I just would rather not. I'm more interested in, uh, 
in drawing and painting and sculpting and modeling. Like if it was if it was a traditional animation, I'd be totally like all for that. But the thing is like I don't know. I and I haven't done traditional animation in such a long time. I'd be really I'd be probably really bad at it by now. But um when it comes to uh, 3D animation, I just feel like it's so like, okay, we'll push a point here, push a point there, you know, part, select this part of the rig, that part of the rig. I can't really like get super invested in what I'm doing. Like I have major respect for everybody who does do that, but I just can't. Leaving Vermars. <laughs> you were a top three artist at your school? Oh, oh, wreck. Wreck. Wow. <sighs> With infinite man. <laughs> I mean, Crimson, you're not 100% wrong. Not a hundred, hundred percent rock. There are people that are not like that, though. But, uh, animators know how to party. They, they are fun people, for sure. But then you, you get, like, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's quiet, quiet animators as well. Where I used to work, there was an animator who sat right beside me, and I didn't, never even knew his name. He never spoke to me for eight months. Well, but more like six months. Six months he was sitting beside me and then he got moved. I never even knew who he was. Hey Raj, I'm doing well. How are you? Oh yeah, no, I tried talking to him. It's just, I feel like he was just not... You just didn't want to. Just whatever. Where I work now, everybody talks to everyone. Everyone is just like super, super hype all the time. Or maybe that's just me. Sorry guys, we only have maybe like 40-ish minutes left of this stream, so I just kind of wanted to try and get a little bit more done with this guy, because I feel like I spent most of the stream talking, so I just kind of want to focus a little bit so that we have like at least some sort of like a demo going on. <laughs>
Yeah, that's okay, Link. A lot of people are like that. <laughs> Maybe, but he didn't talk to anyone, Kevlar. I was always talking to people. I, I'm, I'm a very talkative person. I mean, I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't, right? <laughs> Uh, you don't need to be good at 2D to move to 3D, but it does help. <laughs> Thanks, Link, calling me a weirdo streamer. Pff, pff, pff. Please. But it's true. So what I'm using right now is the lazy uh, step in lazy radius, so that will dictate how far apart each um, each part of the stroke is, the lazy step, and the lazy radius is how long your drag is going to be. So that red line that you see, and that's under the stroke palette, and that's super useful for getting the lines that you want if you have like a shaky hand or you know you just want something super smooth. Oh, it's been the same message every- oh, man. <laughs> nice. MTM, that's awesome. I should have talked to him for six weeks. Yeah, I'm bored. <laughs> Yeah, silver, like, honestly, it happens every... So this this one in particular is the ZBrush Live uh, stream. So, like, you can tune in here every single day and see different artists streaming on this platform. I'm here every Wednesday at 5 p.m. PDT or 8 p.m. EST, whichever is easier for you to convert. Um, and on my channel, I'm live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. EST. So that's yesterday, like, every Tuesday. Tuesday night. Which tablet am I using? I'm using the Intuos Pro Medium. Okay.
<laughs> spaghetti nibs! Yo, guys, the spaghetti nibs, though. Did anybody try that? Please tell me you didn't, because I don't endorse it. <laughs> I mean, Pixelogic doesn't endorse it. Sometimes I wonder where they get these, like, movies from, like, movie quote things. Sydney, yes, his name is still Sydney. <laughs> all movie quotes come for George Like, oh God, help us all. Spaghetti, yeah, no, don't use it. Don't, 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 uh, don't use spaghetti nibs. Not gonna be held like accountable for that. <laughs> Alright, see you, Kid Darkness. Have a great night. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> it's so dark there was like this thing a couple streams back where we were talking about putting uh spaghetti nibs into your pen like taking spaghetti and just breaking it off and putting it into the the pen nib end like that's not recommended but apparently it does conduct the uh like whatever however the black off head actually works and there is a signal that goes through it, but I feel like that's like a really bad idea and don't do it because 
of lots of reasons, like it will break and it will damage your tablet and everything, so... No, don't do- don't try it. Don't- no. Don't try it. <laughs> don't do it, guys. Oh man, these allergies are just like... Oh. Woo. I keep telling you. Can... Wait, what? Coming here and talk- wait, what are you talking about? Oh yeah, okay, Edward. Nice try. Nice try, buddy. Oh no, well, welcome back, Silver. Biggest challenge to get a job in this area is standing out from the crowd. Doing something that's different that um, not every other character artist is doing. What makes you better than, or different, or appealing more so than the giant flood of character artists that are already out there or trying to get a job? One, you gotta, you gotta have a, a appealing portfolio, in terms of having the right stuff in there for sure. Hey Cam, how's it going? Ooh, save. Yes, I haven't done that in a little bit. All right, see you, MDM. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great night. <laughs> Your sinuses are having. Oh yeah, I know. My eye. It's my eyes mostly. My eyes are getting itchy. Oh my god, Eric! Please, you have a job. Don't.
Okay, let's do... <laughs> Eric, yeah, wreck, wreck is rubbing off on Eric. Oh, please don't. <laughs> If you can afford rent in Toronto, you win. I get, dude, I can, I'm living the roommate life right now. That's what I'm doing. We both cry in our sadness together. <laughs> Where's my art station, Link? Uh, Link's got it for you. Or does he? Does Link have it for you? Where's my... <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll find it for you. I'll get it for you. Don't you worry, boo. I got you. I got you. <laughs> One second. My art station is right here. Do I use Maya? Yes, I do. Not at work, but I used to use it at work. Depends on where, like, what company you're working for. But yes, I am a Maya user. More jingles. <laughs> Alright, good night, Thunder. Have a great sleep. Yeah, we've got about 23 more minutes left on this guy. So I think This'll this'll definitely prove for an interesting render, that's for sure. I think we've got enough like uh forms and stuff in here. I think if anything, streaming has definitely made me faster at this kind of stuff, like multitasking. I don't think I've ever been this fast at sculpting because of streaming. Like while I'm talking, I mean, like it's just I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with how far this got while talking as much as we have been during this stream. Though I still still could be working faster, but you know, can't can't complain. Do I play video games? Yes, I do when I have time. 
Thanks, Harry. I'm glad you like it. Jingles are your plan B. You're well versed. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, Silver. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thanks, Link, again. I appreciate it. You saw the turtle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should color this? I'll, I'll be rendering them out. It won't be like full color or anything like that. We don't have time to really dive into that. Alright, good night, Dark. Have a great evening, night, morning. Oh, I guess, yeah, morning for you. Yes, you have a zebrush question. What is? What up? Alright, where's a uh, where's my noise brush? I can get this. Where is what I'm looking for? I always freaking forget what I called things. you want to add specific shape to this character you're making how do you do so you'd like to add a coat cape thingy on him how do you add like a different component like that if you understood what you mean yeah so right here in the sub tool right sub tool palette you can go append and then you can click on any of these primitives so I would say for a cape append a cube and then you can take this cube and kind of like push it down, or you could take a plane. You could take a plane and uh, and do that. But yeah, you could take a cube and then you just kind of do your thing. And another trick in, with the transpose line is if you have this lined up with your um, with your geo and you want to bend it in the middle of the transpose line, the middle white. You hold Alt, then you can get a curve. Right? Yeah, 5.7 is not a lot of uh it's not it's not a lot to be honest with you. I've worked with much higher before. Zbrush ze like it's all about, you know, just getting not 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 making, you know, not paying attention to the poly count. Like it's not it's not about the poly count when you're working in ZBrush. Like for sculpting anyways. It's it's about focusing on getting your design, getting your shapes right, and then you retopologize and use for film or game or advertisement or whatever it is that you're doing later. Yeah, Silver, just like, uh, go back into the, the VOD and you can play it over as many times as you like. The VOD will be on the Pixelogic channel, like, in the, in the video section, um, after the stream is done. Actually, I think it's there right now. It's recording and uploading as we're, we're doing stuff, so if you really want, you can go and check it out right now. But we've only got 17 more minutes, so I don't really want to, like, keep repeating stuff. You can- if you miss something, just like, yeah, go back into the vo uh, the VOD.
Oh, really? We can? That sucks. How many brushes do I use to create the character? Uh, one through nine. Uh, those are so my my so I guess ten ten total brushes. Um, well, maybe no, I didn't use all of them. So I use clay build up, stamp standard. I use H polish. I use snake hook. I use inflate. Uh, I use the pinch brush, and that's it, mostly. And then and then extra stuff would be masking things, and then. A noise brush. And now I'm using MacCut. Just because you mentioned. Oh yeah, and I also used uh, this uh, ZBrush Guides brush with it, which is like a web, a webbing brush. I really like using that to get like this like nasty sort of like effect. It kind of looks like spider webs. You can get it with the damn standard as well. I just I like the feeling of this brush. So if you don't want to like download another brush, you could always do this like with damn standard as well. So a Z modeler modeling tool. Yeah, I, I, I use that a lot at work um, for my home projects, usually not. <laughs> hey, metal. Would I sculpt poutine? I would. I would if I could eat it. Um, I use, if you want to, if you want to tag me, by the way, you have to use uh, at a underscore cubed, which is my username, instead of, um, Pixelogic, Pixel I'm not actually on the Pixelogic channel, I am streaming to the Pixelogic channel. But I use a, I use a tablet, I use a Wacom Intuos Pro. At work I use a 27 inch Cintiq, but here, at home, I use a tablet. <laughs> Hung like Hango. Yo, is it becoming a thing, guys? Is it becoming a thing? Is that saying catching on? Is the is the is the is it trending on Twitter yet? Are Instagram models using it yet? <laughs> Did Drake write a song? Hung like Hango yet? I don't want to. This galaxy sucks. Yeah, I agree. Let's go to Andromeda. Oh wait, no, I don't want it to glitch out. Ooh, too soon? Hey, 
Hey, Grady. Thanks. Which one do you guys- uh, I, if you're looking for a tablet and you have the money, the Intuos Pro is really great, but if you're just starting out and you don't really have a ton of money to blow on it, you're not sure if you like digital art yet, um, try something like the Wacom, like the, the, like, hundred dollar series. Like, they have, they have, uh, tablets with less pressure sensitivity and all that kind of stuff. For, for people just starting out. I do like insects, yes I do. I don't want them touching me, but I like them. Uh, 27 inch? Yeah, the those are those are really great, but you gotta watch your, your posture. It's really bad for your posture, so make sure that you're, um, you know, taking frequent breaks if you're using the 27 inch. I take frequent breaks when I'm at work just to stretch and make sure that like I'm sitting up properly otherwise you're you're doing this a lot like right over top of it. It's really bad for your eyes too. Uh Cam it totally does. <laughs> it totally does. The Hercules beetle? Oh, I love the Hercules. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So ZBrush actually. So if you're if you're interested in ZBrush and you don't have like a ton of money to drop, but you also don't have a tablet, there they have a core and a Intuos um, bundle. So you can get. Well, I don't know. Is it the Intuos or is it like the bamboo? I can't remember. But they they have a um, they have a bundle for both a tablet and a copy of ZBrush Core, which is at a discount, so you can go and check that out. Yeah, we're almost done here. We've got about eight more minutes. The 27-inch Cintiq is uh, not super ergon ergonomic. Um, it's not good for your back. So my advice when using one is to definitely make sure that you're getting up and stretching enough because it does hurt your, your posture.
Hey, Polly Sculpture, how's it going? Yeah, that definitely does help a lot. Uh, I don't have a stand-up desk, though. Even at work, I don't have a stand-up desk, so... Gotta take lots of breaks. Yeah, but it's not like it's not like brutalizing your back, right? Because like if you're sitting, um, the the biggest like crappy thing about sitting and doing work with a Cintiq is you're kind of like doing this. So it's really bad for your your uh, your your neck and your back. But yeah, like John said, like it's it's good to have like a sit stand, so one that you can actually like put or at least have like a chair that's designed for standing desks, so you can sit down sometimes as well. All right, so we're coming up to the end of the stream now. I'm gonna stop doing this just a second. And just to start uh, wrapping it up, basically I wanna mention that everybody on this stream is incredibly talented, um, this, the, the presenters. So if you haven't already hit follow on the Pixelogic channel, I recommend you do so. You're going to learn a lot from every single one of the presenters that um, show up here. It's definitely worth your while to check them out. And uh, tomorrow, if you tune in, you'll be able to see Timothy Rapp. He has made his own game uh, alongside another uh, person that he was working with uh, called Disc Jam. And he's working on assets for that game during streams, so definitely check him out. He's a very entertaining streamer. He's a lot of fun to talk to. And uh, if you liked what you saw and you want to see more, you want to play around with ZBrush and all that kind of stuff, definitely check out the 45-day free trial, which you can get down below. 
And if you enjoyed my segment, um, feel free to follow me on my channel, which you can find, get ready, get ready, get ready, right here, right, right here, yeah, right, right there, you see it? I see it, I see that right there. So if you're interested in seeing more silliness, I'm working on the Thu challenge over at my channel. Uh, so it'll be lots of ladies and um, ladies and monsters and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so thanks everybody for stopping by. And I hope to see you guys next week. You can't see it? Okay, so yeah, my 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 channel here. I'll just like I'll just plug it in chat as well. Here you go. If you can't see that, anyways. Oh no, that's Pixelogic. That's that's uh definitely follow that one as well. <laughs> definitely follow Pixelogic as well. But um come and hang out right over. Here you go. Here's my pad. Alright guys, thanks so much for hanging out. No no feet, but I will leave you with a nice slurp. No, I won't. Okay, bye guys! Good night!